I, I love to go to church. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. I, I love church. I like better than going to church, working in a body of believers that I get a chance to use that which God has placed in me or equipped me with to be able to minister to people and to share with them, you know, the love, the care, the excitement, the joy, the tears sometimes, even simple things like cleaning toilets or building up a church or spending the night in it or doing whatever it may be that, you know, you get a chance to just kind of like, hey, this is unto the Lord, so who cares what it is, you know, it's to the Lord, so God's blessing it and you get a chance to give Him something back for what He's done for you. And I always like that part. Now, going to church, you know, it's kind of like, ah, you know, it's okay, you know. I mean, I like it. It's nice, you know. I visit churches, and they always, you know, have a blessing on them for whatever particular choices that God has made them to become the representation of His body of believers in that area for the people that are there at the time that they need to hear from the pastor and from the elders and all those that are in authority for that body of believers. And so I respect them. I enjoy what God has done in them, through them, to them, and with them to minister to the people that are there. But you know, there's a time for putting aside the religion and putting aside all the gimmicks and games and things and planes and automobiles and toys and joys and getting down to the nitty gritty and just saying, look, you know, do you know Jesus? I mean, come on, let's get real. Do you literally, factually, have a relationship with Jesus. I mean, does he talk to you and do you talk to him? Because anything else is not going to get you there. You know, it's just, it's nice to add it after you know Jesus, but if you don't know Jesus, it might be a good way to learn to get to know him, but you got to come to a place where you can set aside everything and everyone, including maybe your friends, wife, children, neighbors, relatives, whatever it may be, and come to a one-on-one -on -one at some point in time with God, and He has to be real in your life, or you have no salvation. You have no relationship that's going to bring you to the place of salvation. Now, don't get me wrong, you may be in development, so maybe you don't have it quite as deeply as you want, and you need to pursue it better, or maybe you don't hear as clearly as you want, and you need to, like, study more, or, you know, kind of, like, understand more of how He's working in your life. But at some point in time, especially with these devotionals, you need to be hearing God speaking to you. He needs to be moving in your life. He needs to be working out your circumstances or else you're wasting your time. You're on a blind man's journey to fall off a cliff and you're going to die and wind up in hell. So you need to come to some kind of relationship at some point in time with knowing God, literally, physically, in some way, in a real way that you talk to him and he talks to you. There's lots of ways we've been talking about all these devotionals have been doing it, through circumstances of your life, through the written word, through the Bible, through people talking to you, through the pastor sometimes, through a church sometimes, through the devotionals, through even me, who knows? God forbid. Oh no, God spoke to me. Oh no, he am special. <laughs> but, you know, irregardless, even if you choose a donkey, he can talk to you. But the point is, God is talking. And you need to come to that conclusion that at some point in time, you're hearing him. Because if you don't, I hate to tell you this, but you're following a religion and you're not going to heaven. Because a religion won't get you there, but a relationship will. My utmost for his highest. Am I convinced by Jesus? Notwithstanding in this, rejoice not. But rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. Jesus says, in effect, don't rejoice in successful service, but rejoice because you are rightly related to me. The snare in Christian work is to rejoice in doing things for God, to rejoice in the fact that God has used you, to rejoice in what your ministry is or what your service was. You never can measure what God will do through you if you are rightly related to Jesus. Jesus will use you. Keep your relationship right with Him, then whatever circumstances you are in, and whatever you find yourself in, day by day, He will be pouring rivers of living waters through you and out you to other people to minister to them in their need and thirst. And it is of His mercy that He does not let you know how, or why, or who that you might be ministering to, as He does so. 
when, once you are rightly related to God by salvation and sanctification, meaning set apart for His purposes and not your own, doing His will and not your will, doing that which God has told you to do and not what you think you should do, remember that wherever you are, you are put there by God. Where you are, what you are, as you are, the way you are, is what God is using today, irregardless of what you think you're doing. Because you are a light of the world and a salt of the earth, and God isn't using you by your words. He isn't using your actions you think that you are righteous in. He's doing things you have no clue of how he is using you to do what he's doing to other people around you. Because you are affecting them. And it's usually by the least things that you do for him that is the greatest of effect for him. You are put there by God. And by the reaction of your life on the circumstances around you, you will fulfill God's purpose, as long as you keep in the light as God is in the light. Just be you and be truthful, be accurate, be real, be the person God wants you to be, and God will see that you become what he chose you to be in that moment of time, today as you are. The tendency today is to put the emphasis on service. I got to do this for God. You know, God needs my hands. God needs my feet. God needs my bankroll. God needs this and God needs that. And you know what? God don't need nothing. God, frankly, is going to use you irregardless because it is God who works both to do it to will of his good pleasure, whether for a vessel of honor or a vessel of wrath. So the choice is yours. If you participate with him in the light, you become a vessel of honor. If you don't participate with him, he uses you anyways, and you become a vessel of wrath. So the choice is yours. You can go to hell or you go to heaven. God's going to use you either way. So whether you like it or not, whether you participate in it or not, whether you love it or not, guess what? God is going to use you, so you might as well get along, get right, get real, and get on with the program. That's what God does. It's bigger than you are, and that's why he's called God, and you're called created, not creator. The tendency today is to put the emphasis on service. Beware of the people who make usefulness their ground of appeal. All my life I have found in every ministry I've been a part of, people came up to me and told me I should do this. And I said, I'll pray about it. Because they didn't. It was obvious. Because they would tell me where they wanted me to be as opposed to what the Lord was telling me to do. And I often told them, like I've told other people, people will come up and say, you should be a pastor. And I'd say, no, I shouldn't. I should do what the Lord tells me to do. <laughs> That's such a big shock, <laughs> you know, because frankly, you can do anything and God can give you the ability at the moment that you need it so you could be any kind of office that you need to be when God wants to move you around and use you as he chooses to. So don't be all stuck on what you think your gifting is or what your ability is or what you think you're naturally acquired to because God doesn't care about that. He cares about you related to him and him using you as he chooses to and you accepting that from him. The lodestar of the saint is God himself, not his estimated usefulness. It's not your abilities. It really isn't. Your inability is greater by his ability to make you into what you can't be by yourself. It is the work that God does through us that counts, not what we do for him. God working through you is able to accomplish everything about you, around you, through you, and with you, and then also change you so that he can accomplish even more. Otherwise, all you're doing is spinning your wheels like a hamster in a cage, making yourself very, very, very self-important. But guess what? Anyone that's standing on the outside watching can see what's really going on on the inside. All that our Lord heeds in a man's life is a relationship of worth to his Father. Jesus is bringing many sons to glory, but Jesus only did those things he saw his Father doing. And the question is, what are you doing today? Are you doing what God has told you to do? Or are you doing what you think you ought to do?